Ready. Let's let everybody get settled. So go back to our live dashboard. Getting everybody settled. If you can hear me, bear with me. We are waiting for others to come in. I'm gonna call you to help me in a little bit. We're live right now, but I think they can only hear me, not see me. So I'm gonna call you in a little bit, just updating some stuff. Open. Let's get this screenshot updated. Or done now. If I need help unboxing anything, that's all. But you're good. I'll call you. I just don't want to yell in everybody's ear because the mic is right next to me. Bear with me, anybody who's chilling. Um, just making some quick adjustments. Uh, Rabbit Mining is still live. You should be hanging out with him and not me, but bear with me as we work. You guys can see me. What's up? What's up? This is coming from the GoPro at the moment. Just getting everybody settled. They can hear you, by the way, if you speak loud enough. Right. What you doing? Getting some coffee? Yep. All right. All right, Prelatus is set. Keywords are set. Save. All right, we are live. We are live. Delayed a little bit. Let's see how the connectivity is looking. You guys should hear me pretty good because we're using the DJI. Looks like our internet is still crap. Stream health. I wonder if me bringing the phone into the room makes a difference. Listen, watching some uh, roadkill, garage or Finnegan, and the or was in the bedroom. Okay, stream house a little bit better when I go towards the master. Right now, you're looking at two empty boxes. If you can hear me, you're looking at two not empty boxes, but two big ass boxes. Uh, sorry, YouTube monetization, just screwed myself there. Uh, from the fog hashing team, this is the C2 immersion kit. Yeah, and it's getting a little bit better. So I'm going to try to split the difference as best I can. You guys should be able to actually hear me even though I'm in my bedroom right now away from the camera because of the DJI mic. Just trying to see if we can get a better or more stable internet connection. Looks like we are. Let me go check the computer. Looks like we got a little bit of a delay. It's a nice, beautiful day. Let me grab you guys and walk around for a little bit. As we wait, and I gotta link it. Let's see what the delay looks like. Maybe the phone needs to be a lot closer. What's up, Yeti? Okay, so there's a delay of at least 30 seconds, it looks like. The connection looks good. So yeah, we got the cooling kit, or the container itself. The C2 uh, is a lot bigger than the C1. The container, I mean, the container that's out in the garage is about from the edge of this box to about here. And despite being fragile and having warnings and stuff on that, uh, UPS did a really crappy job of taking care of this thing. Uh, my poor little wife had to drag both of these in and they're actually pretty heavy. This is the dry cooler. 
I don't want to show too much because I don't want you guys to get my personal address or anything like that. I do have weapons and you don't want to mess with me. But immersion cooling, uh, the, the, the dry cooler itself is huge. Like, absolutely huge. It does say this one is powered with C13. Remember the C1 that I got had a weird connector and I had to adapt it for US standards. So, yep, we got a nice little delay from when I speak to when you guys hear. Warning, your stream's current bit rate is 1500. Let's go check what's going on. Set you guys down real quick, but audio should be good. Yeah, so the bit rate, no matter what I do, is just gonna be atrocious. So I'll just keep the phone near us. Even when I was uh, streaming earlier this morning on Caffeine and Crypto, uh, the stream quality was horrible. And I wrote to Comcast, but of course they're being Comcastic. So let's do some inception here. Stream quality is definitely hurting or impacting my business. So we'll see. As Rabbit continues to stream, matter of fact, let's turn up the audio, see where he's at. I'm good thing I muted the audio on this. All right, good. Hit the like. So eventually that would, it's always nice to listen to another content creator while you work. All right, so let's, um, let's unbox these things and then I'll bring you guys in for a closer look. Because I'm using the DJI microphone, the quality is a lot better. Um, let's see here, internet, or the audio quality is a lot better. And let's see here, so immersion, container, all right, looks like we got some corner pieces to protect some of the unit. So that's interesting. Okay, so I'm guessing that was on there like that. And then maybe this is the top. Because I want to pack this back up. Holy crap, Ola. Oh, okay. Um, okay, this is just the top. Okay, it comes up. Anything going to fall? Ho, 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 ho. Wow. Okay. This is the pump that we saw at Money Disrupt. This is a lot beefier. Let me get this box out of the way so you got some light. Yeah, boy. Okay, so this is a 220 volt, 50 hertz. Uh, a lot of it's not translated. But I think it's 105 liters per minute. Oh, damn, boy. 105 liters per minute. This looks like maybe an emergency valve or maybe a valve. Like, I'm not going to do that. Okay. We got some marketing material in here. All right. Cool, cool. More marketing material. We got hoses. This looks like a power brick of some type. What is this for? Power brick for what? You send me a Casper miner? Okay. So let's get this box. So, I mean, this is the actual container that we're looking with all the stuff in it. Here's the front that we're familiar with, right? So the LCD, you hit this button to start up. It gives you the readout, temperatures, pump speed, all that stuff. Make sure everything's good, and then you hit it again to start mining. Uh, we should be able to fit two what's miners or two bitmain amp miners in here, no problem. So, yeah. And then here's the tops. Oh, that's cool. This looks like it goes, this, this goes over the pump. 
And I'm recording all this, so I'll re-upload if the quality's crap. And then this goes over the main area where you have your two amp miners or maybe two watts miners. It doesn't look like I could fit four watts miners because you know the watts miners are a little bit taller. They're, they're, they're just tall enough to where you can't fit four. So let's put you guys back. Again, quality of the stream, it's only at 2,000 uh, kilobits per second or 2.2 megabits per second, unfortunately. What's Rabbit doing? Rabbit's testing out, Rabbit's checking out his Osprey, Osprey miners. All right, so that's a little bit heavier than I expected. All right, so how do you want to come out is the question. Oh, wow. Well, this little fog hashing bag. Okay. The wifey might actually like that. Let's put that to the side for now. Okay. So how does this, how does this come out? I feel like I gotta take this middle section out for sure. It's just got some weight to it. Go. Ooh. It's definitely got some weight to it. That's got some some girth. I got some clear hoses. Just take all this out. Ooh. Okay, this is some clear hoses and bracketry. So I don't really know. How they plan to use this I'll have to do some research but these brackets right here are more or less um, to me I guess trying to hold the dry cooler but I don't think so those brackets aren't big enough looks like we got some stickers but then more importantly these look like maybe some type of device used to maybe either trick something, you know, like the dummy connectors for the fans. Let's just set that on the table. These hoses are, I have another set for the C1, but they're smaller. So if I need to drain the unit for whatever reason, this would be a lot faster because obviously that's a lot more liquid. And something fell out over here. So let me go grab that. I'll check the live chat in a minute. Yeah, so here is a um, secondary pump right here. So the secondary pump is, again, all in a language I'm not quite familiar with. 12 volt, 5 amps, 5 liters per minute. So flow goes this way. There's a little arrow here. Let me go get the light for you guys. But um, so I would want to put this end in with one of the hoses into the bottom of the tank and then this end into my bucket if I want it to reverse flow. But five liters, five liters per minute, that's not bad. Oh man. All right. There we go. Lights right underneath the camera now. So let's see if you can see that. And that's what the DC connection is for. Okay, so that power brick that we were just looking at right here. So it takes the C13 and then that barrel plug goes in right there and it's a 12 volt. I wonder if I could use this for one of the Caspa miners, like the Caspa KS0. LS1116, reserve pump, I guess you could say. That's always good to have. As far as these brackets, though, I, I've seen these brackets come with the C1, but I don't quite 
I'm not using mine because um, they definitely don't feel strong enough to hold anything. At least to me, I could be wrong. Fog hashing would probably be like, shut up, Vega, but. See here, O-rings, these are gonna be very important. These O-rings uh, go to the hoses, the inside of the hoses for your connections. Oh, we got some Dogecoin stickers. What else we got? Oh, we got some more stickers in here. Hang on, let's look at the stickers. I'm gonna check live chat in a minute. Let me know if you're still here. Dogecoin, Handshake, Kadena, Ethereum Classic, Nervos, Fog Hashing, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Fog Hashing, Litecoin. That's cool. I will add that to my sticker collection. I gotta find a, a spot somewhere to put everything. And then this, I don't know. So these are screws of some type. Yo, Mikel, I'm live right now. What's up, bud? What's up? You were just calling to check on me? Yeah, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're looking at the fog hashing unit. Come come join us. All right, see us. Hopefully the call didn't interfere with the live stream connectivity. But I don't know what these are. I mean, they look like a pinout. We got ground VCC core for con. COM1, COM2, COM3, so communications. I have to figure out what that is. But that, that was in a little pack on the side. Um, this side doesn't have anything. Oh, here's the manual right here. And let's take a look at the inside of this container real quick. Um, what's in here feels like the hoses. That feels like hoses to me. Uh, let's take a look real quick. Uh, let me check live chat because you guys are probably telling me Vega we can't hear you. What's going on? Uh, oh snap. What's up guys? We have a one key hardware wallet coming for auditing. Nice. Did you get the uh, Yeti? Did you get the kit that we needed? If not, I'll buy it and then we'll remote in together. Yeah, these are the hoses. So this I'm not going to undo this all the way because I answered my question. It's the hoses. So let me bring you guys in. Take a deeper look. So look how thick these hoses are, just for reference. It's about an inch and a half, I wanna say, inch and a half hose, maybe two inch. Um, and here's the actual container. So you could see the holes, the orifices, if you will, um, on this unit is a lot bigger compared to the C1. And this is where the fluid is going to be flowing into the unit and then flowing up and then cascading back in. This time, instead of over a lip, they got it cascading into these little vented areas uh, down into the pump. And then down here, you got two sensors, uh, probably temperature sensor and flow sensor, I want to say. Um, and this type of connection right here that's going to the pump, I'm thinking that's power. That's how it gets it, uh, you know, safely and securely in there. The hose connecting the pump is much more rigid compared to the rubber. And then look at the size of the fittings, right? So the fitting where the hoses go in, and I'm pretty sure this is your outlet, not your inlet. So that's your outlet. And you could see they did some testing because if you look very carefully, the threads on these already had some type of tape or Teflon to it. You see that? So they obviously had to quality test it first before they shipped it to me and then they cleaned it all up. Um, I can see a little bit of scarring or scraping on the bottom where maybe an ASIC was in here, which is fine. You know, again, quality testing, you gotta make sure everything is working, gotta make sure it's doing what it needs to. Before I even start this up, we could see little tiny particulates of cardboard down here. So if you get something like this, whether it's the C1 or C2, make sure that you clean it out. You know, vacuum it, blow it out, whatever, wipe it down. Do not let that get into the system. 
and then that's the front. Um, let's try to get this out of the box completely. And excuse my allergies, it's been really hot. Another heat index warning, it's uh, 110 degrees. So that's, that's fun, that's fun. How's the battery doing? We are at 51%, okay. All right, so how are we gonna lift this bad boy up? So there's a handle, no. That's not a handle. Oh, this is where the power cable goes through. No, is it? That's a pass-through? Is that a pass-through? It feels like a pass-through that I can cut. It feels like I can cut it because this is gonna be important because I have the C19, remember? The C19, the C20. So it's important that I have that capability. Checking on Rabbit Stream. Want to protect your family? Don't forget on September 30th, I got a very special announcement or a special live stream coming to you guys. If you guys uh, are familiar with the channel, um, just stay tuned. I will let you know uh, when that announcement or when that actually comes out. So Rabbit usually goes to um, three, but I think it's going longer now. It's all good. Like I said, I'm saving this for the future. How do I get this thing out of here? Maybe I don't want to flip it upside down, but this thing is not light. This thing is not light whatsoever. Sorry for the grunting there, guys. We're going to leave that like that because I want to box it up. All right, let's put this more in the light and I'll bring you guys over to take a look. It's got wheels on it, which makes life a lot better. All right. So here we go. We got real quick some ventilation on this end. Um, if we look in there, I, I see very carefully some control boards. Uh, some power distribution boards and really it's on the front side oh the pumps on the front side this time okay um, and then you could see the caster wheels if I bring you guys you could see very carefully there's the caster wheels okay looping around fog hashing logo a little bit bigger we got a peelable uh, guy right here but I'm not going to peel it just yet. Be careful, by the way, even though fog hashing does go through QC, you know, this is steel. If you run your fingers really fast across these edges, you will cut yourself. So do not do that. And the beautiful thing is, how the hell? Okay. So the container itself is powered by one C13, but it's a 240 volt, right? So make sure your, your power Right, I'm already on a 30 amp, 240 volt breaker, so I'm good there. And that's cool, because on the C1, um, you have two of these, but then you would be able to plug in your miner in here with the cable. In this case, they're making us run our own cable, which is what it looks like. As you see here, I could probably like cut that, grommet it, and see how that goes. Oh, we got an echo. Because on the C1. There we go. And yeah, so gonna run, because I'm probably gonna have two Watts miners. Um, you know, it would be really cool to work with um, Exxon Mining or Musk Miners um, or anybody in the community, because I would like to put a, what, uh, an M50 in here along with the, the M30S, but we'll see how things go. Not entirely sure, but uh, yeah. So here's the inlet right here at the bottom. There's the outlet at the top. And then the back is just nothing. There's nothing there. And that's pretty much it. Let's see, you can see the bottom there. Front side looks a little bit vented. So that's just a pipe 
the inlet is just a pipe that goes below the unit and then up. If you did replace these wheels, it does look like you could replace these caster wheels with other caster wheels if you really wanted to. I don't see it. It's actually rolling really easy on my carpet, so that's not bad whatsoever. And that is the container. Um, Matter of fact, if, if connectivity would allow me, we'll probably go over and take a look at the C1 unit in the garage that's working right now. Uh, but it's just really cluttered in there. But I'm impressed. So I looked at this pump. This pump is really big. This is basically a biodiesel pump. Diesel pump. Not sure what that red thing is. I'm pretty sure that's like an overpressure regulator of some type. Uh, we'll see. And that's pretty much the container. Now let's take a look at the dry cooler. Take a look at the dry cooler. Looks like stream connectivity dropped. Hopefully you guys got some of that because I guess in the further I get away from the phone, which is trying to capture the GoPro data, uh, the worst off it gets. So let's see if I put the phone closer or in between, does it get any better? All right, we're at 40% battery, so let's go ahead and open up this dry cooler box. This boy is definitely heavy. All right, so the front was facing me. And I'll do that off camera so I don't make a fool of myself. All right. Front facing me. Anything underneath here? Nope, nothing there but the lids, hoses, additional small pump or auxiliary pump. Okay, that one might not work the same way. Where's my knife? What to do with my knife? There it is. Yeah, stream connectivity is going to crap. If you guys are watching this, I'm taking a dump. Just know I will upload it separately. I'm saving it locally with the option provided. Oh, this bad boy is heavy. Okay, so that one's good. This one. I'm going to box this all up. I will be needing the community's help to figure out a couple things. And Crypto McKell, if you're watching, I'll call you back in a little bit. Oh, come on. Where are you stuck on? Is there more tape right here? Yeah, there's more tape right there. Uh, yeah, UPS treated this stuff like crap, man. That's why you never want to ship via UPS. Bear with me, guys. Thank you for your patience. Okay. Two. And I mean, it isn't light, so I mean, if I worked at UP, I understand why they treat crap, but just because it's green, it can be stacked upon it, so. Ugh. Booyah. All right. Move that to the side here so we got some light. It's bad. This boy is huge. That's a huge bit. That's a huge bit. God dang. Mikhail, you weren't lying, man. You were not lying. So, I believe uh, Hobbyist Miner is getting this as well. Um, so, I wanted to give you guys the first look and unboxing of this unit from the client side because I know a number of our colleagues are getting these. Um, I don't know how much moving around I'm going to do with this to be honest. I don't think I'm going to be doing a lot of moving around just to be frank with you. I'm just going to show you this um, in this format and then the big thing is going to be how the hell am I going to mount this in a way that's economical for me, my wife, and my household. All right. So, 
If you have any questions, please send a super chat or at me. Um, one of my moderators, please keep an eye on things. Uh, so if I, there's any questions in particular you guys want me to answer um, or take a look at, maybe there's something in here you have a question about, let me know and I'll do my best. But uh, you can see the pipes right on the side. I believe hot side is the pipe closest to the ground, cold side is the one uh, higher up. You see that? So side. But I will review the instructions. So this, again, the dry cooler, if we look very carefully, is 200, 240 volt, 440 watts max. All right. Um, manufacturer says cold spring on it. We got two boxes. I'm believing one is a temperature sensor. But we'll see. So this side over here with the holes on the bottom. This is the bottom. This is what will be mounted to the concrete that I have to pour and reinforce because I live in hurricane land. Uh, these copper, this copper right here, honestly, would probably be somebody's wet dream. Uh, I think it's copper mixed with, uh, some of my plumbers will correct me, copper mixed with brass or something like that. But look at all those intricate welds and stuff that they did. Uh, to create this. This is a giant cooler, but also if that snaps or breaks at that point, you know, you're, you're kind of SOL. I mean, you could solder it back together, but what I would probably recommend and probably try to do for my household is once I get this thing mounted, probably build like a protective 3D print or protective cow to go over all that. One that's removable and go from there. Um, looks like we can't remove the radiator shroud itself because they're riveted um, but we got two fans two big boy fans and this connects with one connector so this will actually plug directly into my PDU but I'm going to need to have to I'm gonna need to the for what I'm thinking or what I want to do I'm gonna have to consider this in my plans because this needs to sit outside. There's no way in hell it's going to sit in the garage. There's no way in hell. The C1 heat wise is really sat in the garage, especially in 100 degree index, 98 degree Florida day. Hotter than it is in Miami, which is odd to me. Look at the fan blades. The fan blades are a little bit different. The C1 had um, more blades and not as steep of a, uh, of a swoop, I guess you could say. And oddly, they got counterweights on there. If you look very carefully on that blade, there's a counterweight there and a counterweight there. So, I mean, that dry cooler is huge, guys. That's basically, if you look at the GN mod mat, that dry cooler is basically the length of the GN mod mat, but obviously thicker. The thickness of the dry cooler, if we pull this down a little bit, you can see that's basically, I would say about seven inches, maybe seven and a half inches tall. So you gotta factor plans as well. Um, the fact that they laid it down like this will hopefully be a good thing because the fin stacks or the fins is gonna be on the reverse side. And if anybody kicked this, you know, then the fin blades are gonna be uh, bent up a little bit. We got four main screws or bolts. These look like, I want to say, 14 or 15 mil, millimeter. They routed the power through the shroud itself, so we're getting power to both of these. I love the connectors they use. And look, they have the markings. You see the markings? Kind of like what you would do when you're torquing a, a bolt. Right? Everything is torqued to spec. That's pretty cool. I like that. I love that. So a little bit showing me a little bit of quality of fog hashing. I like it. Um, I know some of my colleagues said that there's a dry cooler that is, has a smaller footprint than this and will outperform this unit, this dry cooler, but fog hashing has been the only one that's been willing to work with me and go above and beyond for me, so I am not going to complain whatsoever. So anyways, we got our protective caps there, we got our O-rings, we're going to need to plumb in the hoses, before it goes out, let's take a look at the C1 unit out in the 
I'm gonna need to bring everything with me, including my phone. I don't know how the connectivity is gonna be, but you guys will at least get it in a future video. Bear with me. Still watching Roadkill Garage, or what was it, Drag Week 2022 with Finnegan and Mike, or Tony Angelo. Yeah, good stuff. Um, but we're getting ready to wrap up the stream here in just a minute. Let's see. All right, are those metal blades? No, they look plastic, Pellish Miner. Uh-oh, did I get too far away from the phone? Let's try to keep everything together. Okay, any questions, 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 questions. Thank you everybody for stopping by. No questions, no at serpent without the spaces of getting erased in rabbit's chat. Let's see if that happens here. Huh. It was fine to type serpent X, just not serpent. Huh. I wonder why. So Pellis Miner asks, is the fan blades metal? Uh, again, if you have any questions, please uh, at or super chat me. Uh, but no, these look plastic to me, guys. Some type of ABS plastic. And you can tell just by the grain structure that's in there. There's a little bit of fuzz. Let me get that out of the way. You can tell that just by the grain structure. Actually, I hope that's fuzz and not a spider web. Because that would suck if a spider came all the way from China. What kind of spiders they got over there. But I don't want any unique stuff over here. Um, yeah, the grain structure, you could see it very carefully. It looks like ABS plastic of some type. Not sure. So, alright. So, I'm going to put the phone in my pocket. Um, and we're going to walk out to the garage. And I'm not going to be able to see the screen or anything like that pump included in the radiator or is in a submersible part? It's in the submersible part, the pirate. So as you can see here, the pump's actually in the container. And this is a big boy pump compared to what you're about to see in the C1. The biodiesel pump, um, if you go to engineering fluids, uh, they have guides and all that stuff that gives you a lot of good information because you really want the material to be really good or made out of certain stuff. The hoses, there's a certain quality type hoses you want to get when you're doing immersion cooling. I think the temperatures, uh, not only of the oil, but the temperatures these things are operating in, they got to be able to sustain it and handle it. So fog hashing uh, has been constantly improving and upgrading, and I'm impressed with what they did so far. Uh, this is the C2 unit. We're going to go take a look right now at the C1. You get all your accessories, brackets, uh, O-rings. Sorry, I'm trying not to flash things in your eyes. O-rings for the hoses. Uh, screws, stickers, and then this board, which I have yet to figure out, but there is a manual down there that I can always read up on. Your hoses, both containers, or both sides of the container, so that will go over the pump right here, and that one goes over the miners, so you can keep an eye, and you want to minimize evaporation. Now, the good thing is, is not all fluids perform the same, and I'm going to show you what we got. as long as it doesn't dock me. Um, is the new spider crypto goat, the spider sense, let us know what coin to mine next. Um, well, right now the FPGA is over there mining Radiant. Uh, it was on cap, two squares, and flow code, and um, Ethereum hash, but it's converting it into uh, other tokens that I want. Uh, but I'm focusing on Bitcoin, which, by the way, let's plug in our battery pack real quick. Sorry, guys. I know it's shaky. Bear with me here. We plug in our battery pack and try to get a better handle on everything. And let's go see if this works. All right. So, bye, chat. We're going outside to see if this connectivity works. I have an AI mesh node. Yes. Yes, that was Elvis, my son's picture, um, or that he got. Yes, my house looks like a normal west side house. Welcome to the west side in Florida.
Yo, regular guy, looking down TL, Subi back there. Um, a lot of tools, a lot of crap. And here is the C1 unit. So, C1 unit, and you can see how it's got the minor. It's really, really hot. But you can see, look how beautiful that fluid looks. That is crystal clear fluid, man. So beautiful. Fog hashing does sell. They're if you're interested, you should definitely check them out. Um, and yeah, this is just a What's Minor M30S. Chilling up here. And let me make sure the lid's on. I'm selling this. Um, I'll put all the panels back on before I do. I'm upgrading to the C2 unit if anybody is purchasing it from me. Uh, you can see the cooler. The fan is only a single fan. And it's, it's again, the blades aren't designed the same. If I could turn it off right now, you would see, see a completely different blade design. But it pushes out some pretty good air. Uh, I love this rate. We had a eight sixty. Holds on air, beautiful. Um, or this would be a good, you know, transmission cooler for a decent diesel truck. Take all the top of the car. In. Stuck in well. Um, and you can see I have to use the C19 or C20 to C19 power cable for the What's Miner, which is why. The hole in the back is open so the cable could go through because inside all they have is the C13's uh, type connection. So I had to remove that and this PDU would be maxed out uh, with the C2 kit. And not only that, the breaker would, right? So if I'm going to run two watts miners at 3300 watts, we're going to be encroaching upon that 7200 watts. And look how hot it is in here. Look at that. Welcome to Florida, man. So yeah, the fog hashing unit and the front here, which you can't see because I got too much crap and I have it turned away from me, is the LCD. And it is 60 degrees, 63 degrees Celsius liquid temperature. So it's really, really hot. That's why the garage has been open. Uh, and yes, I do have a lot of plastic. And what's nice and cool, flowing really good. And speaking of keeping things nice and cool over here, we have, Well, let me show you. The it's cool 88 from Engineering Fluids or Engineered Fluids. I don't know why I keep saying Engineering Fluids is one of the best liquids I've. Uh, you get online in various crypto forms. Uh oh, there we go. Connection loss. I got three more. Um, with that, so I gotta drain that back into there. Fill up the other one. And we should have enough for the C2 unit. Let's get back into the AC. You can tell I do a lot of work on my cars because my garage door, while it's white, is super messed up. But um, yeah, so I should have enough liquid for everything. If not, I'll reach out. But let's talk about liquids real quick. So fog hashing does sell liquids. Um, but, you know, I was unfortunately a victim of U UPS. It wasn't Foghat's fault. It was UPS where, you know, basically broke the crap out of the container the UPS lady's truck. So if they didn't do that, I would have taken the containers, but unfortunately... That's what sometimes happens in shipping, especially with stuff like this. But I am glad everything looks good. The only thing we haven't checked is flipping this bad boy over and making sure the fins are okay. Regardless if the fins are okay or not, it's still going to perform. Um, so I'm fine with it. I'm going to box all this stuff back up, put it to the side, and we'll do a video where I want you all to comment and let's brainstorm together uh, a plan. And some of my friends are in the, some of, some of my crypto community guys and ladies are in the Jacksonville area. 
Um, if we want to schedule out something, you guys want to help out, you gentlemen want to help out, we got to figure out a secure, economical, efficient, and sturdy way to mount this to the ground. If we put this on my wall, my concrete wall on the side, I have a feeling a hurricane would just rip that bad boy off. If we put it on the floor and we just get a basic pad, like from Home Depot, one of those little plastic ABS pads, I, it, I'm pretty sure a hurricane would just fly this thing across the world. So we have to find a strong, economical way, and then I gotta find a cow or some type of protective cover to put over this. Uh, you know, it gets wet or whatever, but you know, direct wind, direct, you know, sticks, debris, rocks being blown into it, probably not so much. So some type of protective cover um, and a way to securely the ground is going to be a problem that we need to figure out. So we'll cross when we get to it. This I want to keep on the inside of the garage, but I got to reorganize because you saw how cluttered it is. I got to get the TL either working or out of the garage, getting electrical piping, whatever it might be, um, in a nice secure way, and then obviously seal it to prevent bugs or anybody uh, silly getting into the house. But these are some pretty beefy hose, I would say. Uh, they look pretty long. You can see actually very carefully if you look in there, you can actually see the connector. All right, so it's the same connector similar to the inside of the pump right here uh, that we plug into. And then we just have, again, our outlet. So that's going out into the radiator. And then we have our inlet. So the cool is coming in from the radiator back into here, flowing up from the bottom and then cascading through, right? The heat rises and cascades through back into here and then drains back down. I'm assuming, yep, if you look very carefully, the bottom of the pump is kind of left untapped. You see that down there? Let me see if I can show you. So right here, it's got a nice little gap to where it can suck in the liquid. So very, very cool, very cool. Like a mini swimming pool, in-ground concrete basin, maybe, maybe. Uh, take six inches past each side, dig it out, level four inches. Yeah, Tech Man, you're, you're spot on with what um, my initial plan is. And then I was going to get rebar um, as well as, you know, concrete sand and rock mix, mix them together, bucket after bucket, and stake it out, put wood planks in a perimeter, um, and you know pour over the rebar and everything but then i want to as before it sets i want to put bolts that will fit into these holes right here right so bolts that will come up through the concrete into here and so i got to do my measurements correctly and so those bolts that would be steel galvanized won't rust will be coming up from the concrete to where we can mount it directly. So now they're, they're permanently bolted to the concrete. The only thing, the only problem is, is maybe if the bolt rusts after so many years in this uh, Florida conditions, maybe it will um, rust and I'll have to cut it out uh, with a grinder wheel or something like that. So we'll see. But uh, even though I have my charger on this GoPro, it is using more battery than it's getting. Um, so I want to wrap up the stream. Any last minute questions or concerns? Thank you for joining us. This, by the way, was the fog hashing C2 kit. Uh, the immersion cooling system. There's a giant dry cooler. And then you get a container that can either hold two Bitmain ASICs, uh, whether it's your Caspa ASICs or maybe uh, two Watts miners, like the M30 or the M50, which I do plan on doing. And I am looking, excuse me for burping, I am looking for a company to work with me and uh, possibly sponsor or partner with an ASIC. I'm willing to negotiate. Let me know if anybody's interested. Hit me up. How much was shipping? Shipping was about 340, 380, because it was coming from mainland China. Desi Miner would be okay. So good, good call. So DJ Mines, uh, if. Do you got a contact for them? I didn't, I didn't grab a contact for them. I might hit them up. Yeah, there's some serious lag. I'm sorry. GoPro lag sucks. 
but also uh, Comcast has been killing me. All right, so everybody's good. 22's in chat. Spider Girl. All right, so we're good to go. Just their Twitter. Okay, good deal. All right, well, let's stop looking at the, uh, the live stream inception. I want to thank you all for stopping by. I'm sorry uh, for any conflicts with Rabbit Mining. Um, and I thank you for, you know, just being a great community as you have been. Um, if you could do me a favor on the way out, hit the like button, make sure to get subscribed, hit the notification bell to stay up to date, and check out some of the links in the description to help support the channel because we got to pay for this stuff. Um, but yeah, I need to get another ASIC for the C2 immersion kit. We'll see how things go. Container, dry cooler, a bunch of hoses and accessories. We'll see how things go. So welcome to my house. You guys saw the most of my house that I think uh, I've ever shown before. I'm just a regular guy like you all working at home or maybe in a small office to hash away, secure networks, keep the network decentralized and participate in some form or fashion. So you guys keep hashing, stay strong, stay positive out there. Hopefully the markets will pick up one day. And uh, Fog Hashing, thank you for working with me. And for everybody that helps support this channel, I thank you very much. So hit the like button on the way out. Make sure to get subscribed. Hit the notification bell to stay up to date, as well as check out some of the links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here. And I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. I'm sorry, I don't have any outgoing music for you for you guys to listen to. We gotta box all this back up now. Some bitch. DJI Mike. How'd you guys like it? Sounds good? When it's not connected by wire, 